So British Vogue, ladies and gentlemen, have caused a lot of controversy over their new September issue. And I don't really know what to say about this one, apart from the fact, you know, common sense clearly wasn't present in any way, shape or form at the time of creating this new issue. They have listed the top 25 powerhouse women from all different industries. So you would think they're going to include a top female athlete, right? A very inspiring female athlete. It's common sense. There are many to choose from. Many are doing great things. Well, I'm here to tell you, they have chosen an athlete, but they have settled on trans cyclist Emily Bridges, the only sports person to be listed, by the way. Out of all the female athletes they could have chosen, they narrowed it down to a man identify as a woman. A massive insult to every single person, every single woman in the country. Vogue magazine has sparked a backlash after the only sports person named on its list of the top 25 powerhouse women was transgender cyclist Emily Bridges. The cyclist, who has campaigned against a British cycling ban on trans athletes competing in the women's category, was featured on the list in the magazine's September issue. Throughout the Vogue article, the 22-year-old cyclist highlighted why he was continuing his fight for inclusion within the world of sport, adding that it had caused him to receive. He told the magazine, it's very scary at the moment, but I genuinely believe that we will win and that tells you all you need to know. The Welsh athlete added that the next step is to fight the decision in the courts. British cycling's decision to ban transgender women from racing in the female category was made in May of this year, leading to gender critical activists praising the organisation. Uh, gender critical activists, I think it's just people with common sense. That's the label you get now for having common sense, gender critical activists. At the time, Bridges branded the decision as a against us, adding that the move could see him giving up competitive cycling and immigrate. The cyclist who set a national junior men's record, let me say that again, a national junior men's record over 25 miles in 2018 before transitioning said at the time, I'm having to consider an exit plan from this terrible island. Yes, because this country is just so terrible. Everything's wrong with this country. I do hear though, if you want to leave that Canada and California are bit more welcoming when it comes to these issues but let's just say it for what it is british vogue have included a man identifying as a woman in their top 25 powerhouse females and this is a person who is pushing back against the policy that would protect women in sports would stop men competing against women taking their places awards away from them making the sport fair and safe can you see the, <laughs> the comedic aspect in all of this? And in this article, British Vogue tried to paint the narrative of Emily Bridges being banned completely from cycling altogether. It's absolutely hilarious. On X, they go on to post, cyclist Emily Bridges has been competitively racing since he was 10 years old, but now due to new policies introduced by British Cycling, he has been banned from competing in the women's category. And the headline for this piece goes as follows. I was banned from competitive cycling because I'm trans. That won't stop me fighting for my rights. And because this is completely ludicrous, Community Notes on X then delivers the facts. The Vogue headline is incorrect. Bridges is entitled to compete in the open category and has therefore not been banned from competitive cycling. The statement that Bridges may not compete in the women's category is accurate. You can't make this up. What a time we're living in. Again, you know, there are many, many, many inspiring female athletes, especially up and coming athletes. I don't think the world needs me to tell everybody that, right? It's common sense. I mean, for example, you just had the women's England team reach the World Cup final. Yes, they didn't win, but they still reached the final and that's a massive achievement. So British Vogue, taking all of that into account, thought, yeah, you know what, the best way to represent female athletes on this top 25 powerhouse women is to include a man who identifies as a woman. Even just saying that just really blows my mind. I, I can't believe I'm sat in this chair saying something like that. But anyway, don't take it from me. Sharon Davis, who has just been interviewed by GB News on this situation, gave her take on the whole British Vogue uh, magazine top 25 powerhouse women and the claims that there's no uh, physical advantages for men competing against women. Yes, we still live in a time where people are debating whether there's an advantage. Uh, take a watch. This is why you know, obviously the World Cycling Association, the World Aquatics Association, track and field, British um, boxing, rowing, triathlon, they've all said, yes, all the science shows us that actually you can't remove male puberty advantage. You know, and, and Emily's very, very um, deliberately missed out the fact that there's a Q angle, which if you're male, that's your, you know, 
going to be much smaller. So the Q angle in women is quite a lot larger from your hips to your knees. Uh, in football, it means that five to six times as many women end up with knee problems. You know, we saw that just recently with obviously with the World Cup. Uh, we lost a few of our players because of that. And it, it went something like cycling where, you, where you're sitting on a saddle and you're able to put that power through your legs so much better when that Q angle is smaller. So it's utter garbage to say that there's not an advantage. Mm. And you, you know, you were spot on when you said that headline. It's extraordinary that Vogue can write something like that. I was banned from competitive cycling because I'm trans. Well, this time last year, Emily Bridges was cycling with the men in the university championships, and you know, identifying as Emily Bridges, which is absolutely fine, and able to compete. And Emily Bridges will always be able to compete. Yeah. However, and that's in the Emily open category, be, right, the, Sharon? That's <laughs> and that's in the open category. That Emily Bridges yeah, would be able absolutely. to do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, all that Emily Bridges is not able to do anymore is to compete with biological females who will have a disadvantage competing with someone who's biologically male. And we, we know that. You know, there's 18 studies in the world. The last one was September of last year, which came out of Brazil, one of the largest studies on a huge number. And that said, even after 14 years, they couldn't remove the, the puberty advantage. So there's no way, you know, that it, it's a level playing field. And and, you know, I, I wish Emily good luck. I want her to be happy and, and, and safe, absolutely. But I'm still going to keep on fighting for the opportunity for people that are biologically um, female to have fair sport. And I'm not going to stop. <laughs> yeah, well done to her for saying this stuff. And again, I don't think the world needs me to say well done to this woman. We all know she offers great takes on these sort of scenarios. But to me, as we go further into the future and more policies are put in place that restore common sense, again, it's sad to see that we have to put policies in place. It should really be a talking point, but here we are. As we go further, more and more people are looking for some sort of loophole to try and justify men competing against women. They go out of their way to move the goalposts every single time to justify men taking awards away, taking places away from women. Even when it doesn't make any sense, sometimes they just make up arguments. No, 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 no. They must be included for X, Y, Z. And if you disagree with men competing against women, still you are mean, hateful, and it's bigotry of the highest level. How dare you stop a male competing against women, taking places, awards away from them? How dare you disagree with Emily Bridges being included in the top 25 powerhouse women? That is, again, bigotry of the highest level. Common sense is now bigotry. Who could have seen that one coming? But British Vogue, with this article, with this issue, have lost all credibility, all respect. Apparently, that will be controversial to say. Now, I'm not too familiar with uh, British Vogue, so I don't know if they had any of those things in the very first place. You guys are going to have to let me know in the comments. But it's controversial to say what I just said, even though clearly a publication is trying to make people ignore their own eyes and their own ears and deceive them in the very process. If I was a woman on that list, can't be one, uh, well, shouldn't have said that. But I feel like every woman on that list should feel highly insulted because British Vogue have just sent a message out saying, well, we think Emily Bridges is just as much of a woman than any other woman on that list. In fact, the country. But need I say any more? I've made my feelings clear on this one. And I think a lot of people will agree with me in other areas too. But leave your thoughts down below, ladies and gentlemen, on this new September issue by British Vogue. Leave your thoughts on Sharon Davis. What are your thoughts on her comments? If you have enjoyed today, please for me, make sure to leave a like rating. If you're new, hit that subscribe button and turn on bell notifications so you never miss a video. Yes, I have now learned to say that subscribe button beforehand. I was saying big red subscribe button. It was never red, was it? Amateur. But until next time, it has been your boy JD. Have a great day. Stay safe. And I'm out. Peace.